So is the use of backing tracks a good thing where it can enhance your performances and gigs? Or is it really just cheating and making up for lack of abilities? Well, let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. So we live in a time where we have lots of technology. We live in the technology age. And as musicians, we tend to have a lot of that technology on stage with us. Everything from computers and laptops to cell phones and tablets and audio interfaces. We have all of this technology on stage with us nowadays. And all of this makes it really easy to run computer software and computer programs, VST instruments, and much more. And of course, inevitably, we've learned how to implement this technology into our performances and our gigs to enhance what we do and make what we do a little bit easier. And one of those things that we've implemented is backing tracks. We can literally sit in our homes and in our studios and record performances like instruments and vocals and background vocals and all of this kind of stuff to bring on stage with us to help enhance our performances. So your band needs say a horn section, but you can't afford the horn section or you simply don't have room for a horn section on stage. Well, simply go to your studio, open up your DAW, be it Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, whatever, record the horn parts, bring it to the gig with you, and you got a whole horn section with you there on the gig to enhance your performance. And you can do this as much as your heart desires. Like if you want a horn section on all of your songs in your set, then you can record that, bring it to the gig, and you got a horn section. Your background vocalist or lead vocalist are having trouble holding harmonies or memorizing parts and memorizing lyrics? No problem. Simply go to a studio, same thing, record all of those parts, bring them to the gig for your performance and have them lip sync to them. Or if you don't have background vocalists, now you have a whole set of background vocalists that you can have on stage with you. And the thing is, you can have these performances literally almost perfect because you can sit in your studio and program them exactly how they need to be. So you don't have to worry about the horn section or the background vocalist on stage messing up. It's gonna be right every time you hit that button to trigger that performance. But the question is, is using backing tracks in this way or backing tracks period considered cheating? Does it make you less of a musician? And how does the professional industry as a whole view the use of things like backing tracks? Now, right before we get to that answer, if you're getting value out of this video or you get value out of my videos on this channel, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and do that now. I have a goal that I want to grow this channel to and be helping a total of 3,500 musicians by the end of this summer. And I really want you to be a part of that movement. So it would help me out greatly if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It also helps with the YouTube algorithms and all of that kind of stuff. And of course it helps me to know what type of content you like so I can make that type of content for you in the future. Okay, so let me first say that there is a sense in which all of technology or at least most of technology tends to make us sort of lazy. Like me, for instance, I have converted my entire home into a smart home. Almost every appliance I have in my home can either be controlled by my voice or by an app on my phone. And of course, the vehicle that controls all of that is Wi-Fi. So when my Wi-Fi goes out and I have to actually get up and turn the light on and off, I literally hate that now because that technology has made me lazy. I don't want to get up and turn the light on and off now when I can just do it with an app on my phone or ask Alexa or my Google Home to do it. And this is the same phenomenon with technology that we've implemented on stage as musicians. I mean, places like churches and, you know, other stage performances that we use have things like teleprompters, you know, huge screens that show you the lyrics and all of that kind of stuff. So that kind of thing can make you lazy and, you know, put you in a position to not really think you have to learn your music the way you need to. And a lot of musicians don't even really have to study or, you know, learn music 
thoroughly anymore because they can kind of hide behind the backing tracks that's happening in the performance. So the use of this type of technology and backing tracks and all of that definitely has a tendency to make you lazy if you let it. Now, that said, technology is here for a reason. It's almost a ridiculous thing not to use technology in some way to enhance your performances and enhance what we do on stage as musicians when standards of performances and things like that consistently get higher and higher and higher. I mean, just think about it for a second. If you play for a church or you know church musicians who play for a church or you're just aware of how music happens in church, the standard has been raised greatly over the past 10 or 15 years. Now in church, you pretty much see stage productions and recording CD quality music that is coming from the music departments. And again, just 10 or 15 years ago, we still had, you know, baby grands and nine foot grands and 12 foot grand pianos on stage where people were playing on those and they weren't even mic'd up. Choirs and things like that didn't really have microphones and they were just, you know, they sung with their full voices. Now you're getting a certain quality and a certain standard out of those departments and that has become the expectation. And look, here's the thing. We all use Photoshop to enhance our pictures. When we're uploading content to Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and things like that, we use filters to enhance that content. Those drum videos on YouTube that you see drummers shedding and chopping on, the drums have processing on them like EQ, compression, and reverb to enhance what you hear in that performance. A lot of the popular YouTube videos that you watch from your favorite content creators have what's called color grading on their videos to enhance what that video looks like and give you a better experience when you watch it. The Hollywood industry and movies and films spend up to a year or two after they shot the film in post-production trying to enhance that film and add things to it using technology to make your viewing experience a whole lot better when you watch that movie. And the point is here that technology and the way that we use it to enhance what we do is all around us every day. So to be fair, if you're gonna dislike one form of it, say backing tracks to enhance musicians' performances, then you kinda have to dislike the other forms of it as well. So here's the thing. Bands and professional artists and musicians have used technology and things like backing tracks for years. This is not a new phenomenon by any stretch. You may be old enough to remember the group Milli Vanilli got caught lip syncing to their backing tracks back in 1989, which kind of ended their career because people had long suspected that they couldn't sing and you know they had been going in the studio and just basically showing up with their tracks and letting those tracks do all of the work for them. And not only them, you can go back to you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago and watch some of say Janet Jackson's old concert tours like the Velvet Rope Tour and all of that kind of stuff. And you see her on stage dancing and gyrating like crazy and her vocals are still perfect. You know she's using some form of backing tracks to you know, help enhance her performances. And this is just two examples out of many that I could name. So look, it's simple. It's not really a big deal if you use backing tracks to enhance your performances and technology as a whole to, you know, enhance what you do on stage. I'll just say that generally speaking and overall, that it's probably better to use them as enhancements rather than using them as cover-ups. And even that's kind of subjective because what a cover-up is to you may be an actual need or enhancement for somebody else. So it's something you kind of have to judge for yourself but you do have to be careful to not use them as cover-ups because audiences are smart to that extent and they can sniff stuff out like that. The important thing to remember about this is that no one in the general audiences that you're performing for are gonna care too much about whether or not you're using technology or backing tracks on stage to enhance your performances. All they care about is dancing and having a good time. And a significant part of them dancing and having a good time comes through how you sound when you're performing. And in today's music industry, for better or worse, things like technology and the use of backing tracks is something that is incorporated and that will help you sound like a professional band and to some extent has become synonymous with what a professional band is. But the question is for you. What do you think about using backing tracks on stage to enhance your performances? 
Do you use them and think they're great? Or do you fall on the side of, you know, you don't use them and you hate them and you think it's unprofessional? Jump down in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on that. I definitely want to hear them. And listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope that it was helpful and shed some light on this whole backing tracks and technology situation in the music industry. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Go ahead and do that now. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now. Thank you.